Good evening, everybody, and thank you for uh, allowing us to be a little bit late tonight. Uh, we've got, I think, an interesting show, and I do have Angie with us. We're having some technical fun today, and it's been one of those days from the very beginning of the day till even up to right now being a little bit late coming online. It's been technically challenging. I think that I've made my own challenges, which maybe I'll talk about those tonight a little bit. Uh, anyway, uh, let me go ahead and get Angie up here. Um, Angie, I'm going to switch right over. Let me actually switch to here, and then we're going to switch over here. Well, good evening, Angie. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Rick? I'm doing well. Um, thank you guys uh, for hanging out with us tonight. We um, we missed last week. Uh, I apologize for that. And I've got, uh, yeah, sorry, the, the uh, whole green screen backdrop thing is, um, yeah, anyway. It's it's a thing tonight. <laughs> Angie can't see what's going on because for whatever reason, uh, Skype decided. Oh, I got a I got you on I got your picture now. Are you are, are you pictured with me? I don't me, see you. Well, let me turn my camera on. Hold on. Uh, is it gonna work now? Oh hey. I see you <laughs> oh, now. you've got to be kidding me. All right. Well, I'm not gonna let Angie get away <laughs> with not being here. So we're going to add ah. her right here. <laughs> oh, come on. You're telling me. I thought I was going to get to be a voice. You are. And then for whatever reason, it's now like not letting me add you. Oh, that little sneaky son of a gun. All right. I, I'm going to let you just be a picture tonight, Angie. How you <laughs> like that? You like that? You appreciate that? I like that. that. Yep. Good. Sounds good. Next week, you're going to be here. I don't know what the problem was uh, other than... Uh, I tried something new and, and then when I talk about new, I have some different hardware that I'm trying to work with. Um, and I will say that uh, I like my older hardware uh, and you know, you don't know how a thing's going to work until you actually get in there and try it. And I have not tried it and I don't like it. <laughs> and this is from talking about computer hardware. So I will be probably replacing that going back to something I prefer and everything will run more smoothly, hopefully next week. But in any case, let's talk about what we're going to talk about tonight. But before we get to that, some announcements. So um, first things first, if you guys haven't um, seen the contest, right? So we're giving away Angie's um, custom, very awesome. I want to put a link here. Uh, very awesome. Um, custom air battery avenger 25 caliber and if you guys want to see the videos on this you can watch them right here you actually get some points for uh entering we've had good results um now this isn't 3,000 people but there's 3,000 points so you can kind of start looking at the math we've got it's good we've had good uh good turnout on this it's probably one of the better contests we've had so pretty excited about that um if you guys want to check this out I put the link in the page. It's also in the video description. You going to say something, Angie? I was. I was going to let you guys know what my friend calls this gun. She calls it the bruise. The bruise. Because it's blue and purple. And, yeah. <laughs> black, blue, and purple. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. I have a custom Avenger that's in gold and black. I, I need to do some more video work with that. Uh, just a really – look, the Avenger's an awesome gun, right? I mean – Yes, it is. It's a – this is what four hundred dollars plus or minus a little bit. I think the ballpark's four hundred. This might be a little less. I don't know. But let's just say four hundred dollars. You can tune it. Uh, you can adjust the reg. You can adjust the hammer spring. You can adjust the trigger. You can do all of that without having to take the gun apart. It's like it's so nice to have that like as an entry level gun because you have. We're gonna get. We're gonna get to this. But you have the FX Impact Mark III like I do. And you got yours from Pyramid Air. I got mine from FT Air Guns, right? Right, right. And if have you posted any videos of that, or is that coming up this week? Um, I think it's coming up this week. We've gotten a little ahead on the video, so I yeah. really don't know what's coming up. Um, I think it is and, coming up this next week. And it looks like it looks like our chat's broke, guys. So I apologize. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, we're just going to we're gonna we'll just do a short show tonight. So I apologize that the chat's not working. If you guys watch this, hopefully you guys will enjoy it anyway. <laughs> and if you just put comments in, Angie and I will pay close attention to the comments from the show and we'll we'll spend some time answering them, Angie. So let's just make a plan to do that, okay? 
Did it just break? Because I'm seeing comments. Are you? Well, I, I can't see any. So look, I can't see you. You can't see me uh, so much. Actually, you can see what I'm doing, but they can't see you. If you have comments, then you're going to have to just do the comments tonight because I, I can't see it. My, my sister broke, can't connect. So, and I don't want to stop the stream and start over. So just, it has been one of those days, guys. I'm just telling you. It's been crazy. We're going to get to some of that here in a little bit. Anyway, Avengers, good gun. The adjustability is awesome. I know you're working with the, the Impact Mark III. I'm working with the Impact Mark III. That adjustability is also all external, but a whole nother animal. <laughs> right? Yes. Like, yes. And in the upcoming video, I do explain. I'm a little intimidated or a lot intimidated by that air rifle. But I, I did I, take it I, hunting we're, recently. We're going to talk about that. Don't give it away yet. Yeah. You guys haven't okay. seen. You haven't already <laughs> seen her posts. We're going to be talking about that. Yeah, I look, personally, I'm not much of an air gun tinkerer. Um, I sort of shoot them as they as I get them, or if I'm going to hunt with them, I just turn them all the way up and leave them. I'm not someone who gets in there and adjusts every little bit. It's just not my thing. I know that there's a lot of people that do that, and I admire their patience to go do that. Um, but I, I like to I like see what it'll do. But once it's sort of set, I'm done. I don't need to do any more with it. But you know, if you're into that, the Avenger, gosh, is such a great gun. And I know that they've got the new Avenger X coming out, which is going to take it to the next level with, I think you can change calibers and you can change stocks and you can change bottles and just a completely new level to that affordable adjustability that's pretty stinking cool. So kudos to that. So anyway, if you want a chance to win this, that was the whole point of this. Go to the contest page. I dropped it in the chat, Angie, but maybe you could throw it in there too if it, mine didn't come through. Um, it did. All right. All right. Cool. All right, I can't see the chat, but cool. At least I can throw stuff in there. Yeah. So you guys definitely go sign up. And there's all these different ways. Like um, uh, you can just visit a web page. We even have the simple no hoops entry, which just you don't have to do anything. It gives your email address and name and you're done. Um, you're not signing up for anything. You're just entering. Uh, there are, you can join the newsletter. You can uh, like a Facebook page, like a YouTube channel, all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, more, the more hassle it is for you, the more points you get. So we reward you <laughs> for putting yourself out there and uh, yeah, making the most of your entry. So anyway, if you want a chance to win this, go out there, you know, check it out. Um, the, uh, the next thing I want to talk about just briefly is our newsletter. Um, this is what gave me like the fit of fits today, Angie. Um, so here's what's going on. I uh, we, we put out a lot of content um, and, and I don't think most people know the volume. I got a response today like, oh my gosh, I had no idea you guys are putting up so much content. Thank you so much for sending me the newsletter. I would have missed so much stuff. That is expressly why I wanted to do the newsletter, right? Um, like, if cool. we, yeah, I mean, that was right on point. That's exactly why we wanted to do it. So if we come here, I mean, Airgun Web last month, I mean, these are the videos we put out. It's a bunch. And then you look at the grip videos. Um, you did more. Look at you, Angie, over, over, overachieving there, uh, doing more videos than me. How dare you? Um, so Angie I can slow down if you'd like no, me to. No, no, right? please don't. I want you to just keep <laughs> going. That's the whole reason why we want to do this stuff. Keep pushing that content. But we have a lot of stuff, and it's diverse, right? So um, like on our content this last month, we have everything from the Day State Huntsman Revere, which is what, 1500 bucks for that gun, plus or minus, mm -hmm. uh, yep. to the JTS Aracuda Standard, which is three and some change, to the Gamo Arrow, which is two and some change, um, to the Bullpups 400, J, J, I'm just talking value here, right? Um, Aracuda Max is four and some change. The MX Viper, that's a thousand bucks. Jets, three hundred. Notos is three hundred. I mean, we have a wide range of offerings. So there's there's pistols there. There's entry level rifles. There's uh, more enthusiast class rifles, and there's stuff in the middle. That is a wide selection of content that I think is pretty cool. I mean, personally. Yeah. Um, hey, Rick. We, yeah. G Man says your volume is about half the sound of mine. Really. Well, mm -hmm. that is, again, a result of this wonderful new system that will be gone uh, by next week. I will try and turn it up, G-Man. Let me see what I can do. Uh, thank you for letting me know. And the most important comment so far is, 
Rick can't see what we're saying about him. LOL. That was from Backroads Air Gunning. <laughs> That's awesome. Just what we needed, right? Oh, I can turn this <laughs> on. Let me see. Let me see. How's that? Oh, my gosh. I'm in the red. <laughs> Uh, let me know, G-Man, but I think that'll that'll give us some volume. Anyway, yes, I cannot see what you guys are saying about me, which is just fine. Sorry. Pretty pretty thick skin here. And thick head, as some people would say. Anyway, as we look at the content that Angie's done, we have a similar sort of variation. We've got some um, SHOT Show stuff, which we're still getting caught up with that. We've got everything from the Dragonfly um let's see we've got the beam commander benjamin bulldog she's got some big big boar stuff beam and under lever that was you know an entry level gun um and the diana storm rider which i think the storm rider was really uh has a lot to do with the buck rail stuff correct right right, right. so if you haven't seen that video take a look because angie you show it with the synthetic the wood and the custom parts from buck rail right i do yep and that's just I'm, that that little gun has really grown on me. I really like it. And you were shooting that little, and that, he has it cranked. So that's not a, I don't think that's a factory setting on his gun, by mm -hmm. the way. Um, but he has the power turned up to 11 because you're pushing over a thousand foot per second with that, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you were having any chance at 50 yards with that 177, which you actually shot pretty well at 50 yards, if I remember at least one of the pellets. It did. It yeah. did. So impressive, but he's got it cranked. So it's a very, very cool little gun with a lot of potential if you like to tinker. And um, Buck Rail, if you like, if you like tinkering with guns, taking them apart, putting them together, very, very cool. So G Man, let me know if this audio is better, if it's too loud or, or too soft. Let me know. He I said, can make some adjustments. He said it's about even now. Bob oh, okay. says you're on the edge of being hot. You're on the edge of being hot, Rick. <laughs> I've been that all my life, Angie. Although, if I, I showed you, if I showed you my picture, my graduation picture, I might have just tipped the scales a little bit. But we'll save that for another day. That was a um, long time ago. You ain't freaking kidding. <laughs> and I'm just getting fatter too. I mean, I, I'm looking at my videos now. This is an aside. As you guys know, I'm dealing with chemo and all that other stuff. I had no idea that that the expectation of going on chemo was going to be that I was going to gain 25 pounds. Uh, or more, but it is, I did not know that was one of the side effects. So on the other side, I got two more treatments to go guys and it's getting more tolerable. Praise God that it's, it's blood work looks good. I'm dealing with the side effects better. All of that stuff's looking very well. I've got two more treatments to go and then yeah, I got to find a treadmill or something. <laughs> I got to do something. Yeah. Anyway, I'm getting just wider. I'm starting to obscure the entire camera when I stand up in front of it. Um, yeah, let's not talk about that subject. Let's... <laughs> Moving on. We'll move on, right? <laughs> anyway, back to the newsletter. Um, for you guys that are part of the GTA, uh, what we're doing is I, I have people, if you sign up for our newsletter, you go into our constant contact, you get the newsletter. That works flawlessly. Awesome. Uh, we have about 15, 1,600 subscribers there, which is great. We have about 22,000 members or more, maybe 23, 24,000 members on the GTA. I try and send the newsletter to the GTA membership and the system just can't handle it. I mean, uh, the first send today that was blank was my fault. The second send I tested before sending to everyone, it worked. So that was the system just couldn't process getting it, getting it out the door. And so I'm manually, people that tell me I didn't get it, I'm just manually forwarding them a copy. Um, which is fine. I don't mind doing that. Uh, it hasn't been a ton, but it's been enough that it's been basically all day. I've been just dealing with this newsletter issue. We are going to be doing it different next time around. Just full stop. We've got, uh, we're, we are going to figure out a better way to do this that doesn't um, so negatively impact my day <laughs> and people not getting. It's frustrating. You know, I'm asking people to be, uh, to take one email a month for the sake of the GTA and when they get two emails and both of them blank, they start saying, you know what, maybe I don't want this anymore. Well, frankly, I don't know, maybe I just have a very high tolerance because I get so many emails, but a couple emails a month just help support the GTA seems like a very small thing. Um, but hey, that's just me. Anyway, so next month we'll do better and we will get this dealt with so that 
um, yeah, it's less of a pain. The other thing I want to mention briefly, in case anybody's interested in helping to support it, um, Ergon Pro Shop is doing a raffle to help support and help raise money for Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Uh, Tyler himself, he's diabetic. He wears an insulin pump. And so he's and he's actually a nurse, uh, or he does, I think he is actually a nurse, and he works with diabetics to help get them used to the pump and work with the pump and stuff. So he's he's very much involved in that because it's obviously it's part of his life. Um, but he's trying to help out this research, and he's donated uh, his SWA shotgun. Uh, you could win this shotgun, basically. So they got a raffle going on. If you guys want to check that out, you can click this link here. Um, I'm going to put this link in the chat. If somebody, if you want to get a copy of the newsletter, um, just go to it on Constant Contact's website. I just put the link in there. You guys can take a look at it and get all the information if you guys want to have that available. But just wanted to put that out. If you guys want to help support what he's doing, I'm sure they would appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> all right. Topic of today's show, right? So um, I have been doing some videos looking at uh, big bore pellets. So 30 cal and up. Is, that's my where I put big bore into. 30 may be more mid bore, but we're going to put it in the, in the big bore. Um, I have done some hunting with 30 cal and 35 cal. I prefer larger, personally. 45 is my favorite. But... 35 is a very useful caliber that doesn't get the attention I think it it warrants. Um, and also, I think that the um, the ability to shoot, there's like 35 is like this interesting caliber. I don't know if you've noticed, Angie, but you have two really good pellets. You've got the 8102s and the Hades at 35. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're shooting pellets, you've got a really solid option. And then 35, there's a lot of different slug choices out there, like a bunch. Yeah. Um, right. And now your gun may be the limiting factor. And I think that's the issue that we're having, both you and I are having with, say, the FX. I don't have any slugs to run in the FX that I feel comfortable that are going to get the job done. Now, I haven't tested. I have some 95 grain hunter supplies I want to try. But the magazine's very skinny. So what are you going to run in the mag that's going to fit? Have you found anything for the 35 that'll work? Not in slugs. Okay. Nope, not in slugs at all. I've, but, I've just been, I don't even have any Hades, so all I have is the 8102s. Now, is Joe out of the Hades right now? Is that the issue? Yeah, they're on back order. Okay. And once you get the Hades, I think that, I now, tell me a little bit about your hunt that you had. Like, and and I'm okay with you telling folks your, some of the, I mean, your your journey with the FX hasn't been seamless, correct? Right. Right. Um, well, should I tell you all about the first hunt? <laughs> yeah, I, I think you should. I, only only because of this. First of all, neither you nor I are perfect. I know I, I'm, I'm outing you a little bit on that. I, a Angie isn't perfect. You guys already know I'm very imperfect. Um, but we make mistakes. We It's a learning curve. You get something new. You've never shot it before. You, you, how do you learn? You go out and, and use it, right? So that's what I do. That's why I like showing you guys the out-of-the-box footage because it's me learning. It's me learning how to use the gun. Uh, and it's, a lot of times I've never shot it. So it's kind of cool. And I want to share that experience with you. Now, I know, Angie, as you're getting to use the higher-end stuff, the FX impact, the reason I wanted to impact in 35, I have a lot of small bore guns that shoot really well and they don't have to be expensive. Like I got 22, the heck, the Bar 1100Z shoots really good for what, mm -hmm. two and some change, right? Um, yeah. Not a lot of money. So I don't need an expensive small bore gun when I have affordable ones that shoot really, really good. I didn't have anything like the 35 cal impact in my collection. I wanted something like that that was just awesome, like nasty, powerful like ridiculously adjustable, just really high end. That's why I suggested if you got these hunts planned, whether it's coyote hard or whatever, go for, you know, try and get yourself an impact and pyramid air stepped up, got you one. So you get it in. What happens? You have this brand new gun. That's like way over your head. It's over my head. I'm not, it's not a cut. It's just a reality. It's over my head. Um, and what happens? What happens next? 
Well, I did I did shoot it a little bit at the range just to kind of get to know it, and um, it was shooting pretty good. I took it into the stand to try to get a hog. The, the deal with is I want it for a hunting rifle, and I know shot placement is key no matter what caliber. I'm not saying go out and use a small bore to kill big animals or anything like that, but um, I, I was pretty confident that this one could take a pig, but I went into the stand and... It's got the bottle, and then on top of the bottle is the floating barrel. And I, not knowingly, the pig was right there. I rested the barrel on the window seal of the stand, and I took a shot. And <laughs> I really thought I hit him, but I went back and watched the video, and it went probably eight inches over the top of his head because the barrel, I rested the barrel on the window seal. So completely missed that pig. And are you going to say something, Rick? No, 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 go ahead. Okay, so I went back and I was, I was extremely frustrated. And I've actually been seeking out a way to maybe put a barrel band on the FX so I don't have that issue anymore and the barrel stable and, and that kind of thing. Um, I don't want to get into it and tune it yet until I perform the grip review. So I don't want to make any changes at all until I perform the out-of-the-box grip review. Um, so I'm leaving it like it is. But I had some pigs come in. And the deal with Pyramid Air is it's going to be my hunting gun. So I went and I got back in the stand. I realized my mistake. I got back in the stand. And the only ammo that fits in the mag that I have are the 8102s. So um, it was early morning. I had a whole sounder of pigs come in. And I shot one right between the eyes, dropped her right in her tracks. Another one came out, shot that one right between the eyes, dropped it in his tracks. And um, two more came out. I shot at them. And they ran off. I did not recover those. It's kind of a bummer. And then another one came out and I shot her. She dropped, but she laid there for two and a half minutes, picked her head up. So I shot her again and the, the same thing happened. The, the bottle actually fell off the window seal and the barrel hit the window seal and I missed her and I didn't realize that. Next thing I know, she's up and she's walking away. So I shot her again. I did recover her, but... Um, there's definitely a learning curve with each different air rifle and the impact in 35 cal absolutely has the power to do the job but shot placement is key and using it like you're supposed to not resting the barrel on the window seal actually resting the bottle so yeah definitely a learning curve there yeah and and the reality like i i, I mean angie and i we talk she calls me with this stuff and i say look angie it's it the Floating barrels, and I actually am going to be working on an article to re do research on this, but, you know, floating barrels can be the most accurate. It deals with the harmonics better and all this other stuff. Um, but everybody wants to, like, vice the barrel, and, do, and that can also be useful. And the impact is really more of a bench gun, right? I would say it's more of a bench gun than a field gun. I guess. I don't know a whole lot about it. Really. I mean, I, I it's it to me... That gun seems like it would be, especially the the 35 we have. I don't, if you have the 700 millimeter barrel, you get the really big barrel, or right, however mm -hmm. long it is. I don't know how long it is. It's big, the longest barrel they got with the moderator at the end and the whole deal. Um, you got the power plenum. You've got the gun that's set for max everything, I believe. Um, right. But it's a little long. It's you know for that trouncing around the woods to me it would seem awkward. Um, it's a great bench gun, you know, stable, put it on a bipod rocket all day long kind of a thing but as a hunting gun um i i would almost want to put that in one of those caldwell um tripods mm -hmm. or maybe get a tripod from i don't know if pyramid air sells the vice or the clamp or the one that has the weaver connector for the bottom rail we actually have a tripod that holds your gun for you something like that may be the ticket for the hunting you want to do right, right. um I know that FT Air Guns has a really cool tripod that they had out here, and it and it actually has a weaver mount or a Picatinny mount that grabs that bottom rail on the gun, right, and holds mm -hmm. it securely. But you can also loosen it and actually use it to swivel. And it, you know, if you're standing and shooting, it's carbon fiber. I know some of those things might be the next something you want to try uh, on that gun because I I think if you're going to be have that potential of kadonk on the barrel you probably want to get a barrel band <laughs> or yeah. or get some some other way that's that's going to prevent that from happening right but yeah. um i have had 
like I haven't hunt, I haven't done any hunting with mine. Now, I want to get set up for coyote. It's, I'm like, it's there. I can go hunt coyote anytime here. I just haven't had the energy. Uh, frankly, I just haven't had the energy to go do it. Um, when Angie gets out here, I'm hoping she's going to provide the motivation for us to go out and shoot a couple coyotes. So that'll be fun. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It won't be, hopefully it'll cool down a little bit. Right? It's been really hot, but anyway, we'll go deal with that. When she gets out here, we'll go hunt some coyotes with, with our FX impacts and have some fun with them. Anyway, um, I've been really working on learning the gun on how to get the most out of it, most power and most accuracy. Now, I think you learned something interesting in your hunt that shot placement is super, super critical, right? I mean, you already know that. It's like, duh. Um, but, but, but the pa- smaller the caliber, it's, it's even more critical. Right, like, exactly. I, wouldn't, yeah. I would not um, really want to take a body shot with that one because I, it might get them and it might get them good, but they're, they're going to be able to run for quite a while. And who wants to go in the woods after an angry shot hog? No, not no, me. No, no. So your headshots, did you, now you were taking straight on. Did you try any like behind the ear shots or anything like that? I did. That's the one that got back up. Okay. I so, got gotcha. you. Yeah. The straight I'm on. Convinced, but yeah. Between the eyes is the way to <laughs> right, go. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cause I've, I've shot, I've, I've tried hunting actually with a 25 cal, uh, which I think is a little light for pigs. Frankly, um, I was using the Maxima Thor, one of my favorite air guns of all time. Um, and I caught one on the run, actually, and tech, took him right behind the ear and rolled him over. Small. It's not very big. 35, 40 pounds. Not a big hog. But you were the what you were killing was, you, they were like 100 pounds, right? right? Right. Yeah, these were not like piglets. These were not 30, 40 pounds. These were 100-pound hogs. So not insignificant. Not 400-pound hogs either, but right. still um, not insignificant. That's a lot. It's a lot. Um, but doable, I, I do wonder if like the Hades would be better. I do wonder the same thing <laughs> and I hope to find out, yeah, but uh, I would, can, may I disagree with yeah, you yeah. on something? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So I know you said that the FX to you is more of a bench gun, but shooting that thing offhand, I killed a rat <laughs> offhand, no rest at all with the FX 35. I don't know what it is about me shooting rats with 35 cals, but I don't know. It, it to me it is an offhand um, kind of run and gun air gun, but I guess it just depends because it's light, it's comfortable, it's. I'm know, glad I you like it. it. For me, it's a little big for that personally. <laughs> I would I would want to have something a little shorter, and, uh, you know, like personally, I would rather have like the Air Arms uh, tactical, frankly, for running and gunning. Uh, versus yeah. the FX. Of course, it's a completely different gun, completely different power output, completely different scenario. So, um, for the uh, actually for the, for the kind of stuff you're talking about, if I were to like my ideal gun for what you're doing would probably be like a Rex 35 or something, like mm-hmm. one of the short. I mean, it weighs nothing, single shot, but yeah. you can make it quiet. Um, you're pushing. 150 and some change, 160 foot pounds. Um, you can run whatever you want for ammo. Doesn't matter because the breach is huge. Um, to me, that would be like sweet. But again, yeah. Yeah, anyway. the whole purpose of that was um, hoping to be able to take 75, 100 yard shots at coyotes. Yeah. I think you can do it. One of the things you, you mentioned about it, so, so daggum quiet. Oh, absolutely and i shot the first hog and the rest of them were like i don't know what happened to her but let's eat yeah <laughs> yep, that's, that's beautiful guys <laughs> that's beautiful yeah. yep. um all right so i know you're gonna have a video coming out on that so you guys could if you're not subscribed to the gta um youtube page definitely get subscribed because we'll be pushing out a video on that um now the other gun now you don't you haven't shot this but the other gun that I've been working on, and I classified as big bore. This one on the picture is the Western uh, Air Guns uh, 30 cal Rattler. Um, that's semi and full auto, so that's you know mm-hmm. another next level stuff. Um, 17 round magazine, huge mag. I gotta snap my fingers, get my camera to come back. Come on, camera, you can come back. You can do it. It's stuck. There it is. Uh, I need to snap one more time. Uh, yeah, technical things. Gotta love them. Um, all right, so 
that has a huge magazine, so you have no issue with trying to love slugs. I tried to shoot a video this weekend. I wanted to shoot slugs in that goat, and I had no idea the power range in that thing, but it's stupid. I mean, it's ridiculous. I was shooting, oh, I have to go back and look at the numbers, but well over a thousand feet per second with heavy slugs, which mm. is just insane. Um, the adjuster on the bottom has so much headroom for power output. So the pellets were just like stupid to way too fast. So I backed those down. I, I spent my video sort of dialing in the pellets to get them at the velocity. This let this next it's coming out to went out yesterday. Um, you guys should have seen it. Went out yesterday. Um, I think so. Was it the FX? No, the FX went out yesterday, and the uh, Rattler goes out tomorrow, I believe. Let me look at my calendar. <sighs> Let's see. Yeah, the FX was yesterday. Okay. All right. FX was yesterday, and the Rattler goes out uh, goes out tomorrow. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to, like, with the FX, I wanted to dial in velocity and then shoot several groups to see if I maintain consistency. Um, and the uh, the 30 cal, we had, a little, we had more wind. You could just see it pushing the banner, so it was right to left wind, so it blew a little bit. But I think one of the groups I got was sub-MOA at 50. It was really, really good. I think it's the picture. The picture that's on this um the uh, thumbnail for this video is that that shot card with that gun. Um, but yeah, I had to dial in the, um, I had to really dial in the velocity to get that to do what I wanted with pellets. I haven't found a slug yet that'll run in it. Now, I just got a shipment of some more slugs from Airguns in Arizona. I'm going to go see what I can find. I've got everything from Zahn to Nielsen to I don't know, a whole bunch of different slugs. I've got some from Northern Precision, some 30 cal slugs. I've got a bunch that I want to just run through, but I don't know. Maybe you guys could put it in the chat. I don't know where my velocities should be. I I thought crank it. You're going to get great accuracy. You get those slugs ripping a thousand feet per second. You're going to be golden. I was not golden. <laughs> I was, um, I was shoot. You know my big targets. I shoot right in you with all the bulls on them. Yep. At 50 yards, I was doing good to keep it on the paper. Mm. It's awful. It's terrible. Mm. So the gun will shoot. I can shoot pellets and get sub MOA. I have not figured out slugs yet. And it maybe I haven't found the right slug yet, but I, you know, goodness, you talk about a gun that has me, uh, that's over my head on the learning curve side. That's, that's one. I, I've got to just go spend time with it. So that's my, my next thing is just start going through these slugs and see what I can get to shoot. Well, I'm going to scooch in to like 30 yards and just shoot big targets and see if I can get, see what, see what comes together that, that actually looks like it's going to do what I need it to do. And then start dialing in the power, but there's the power goes from uh, 60 foot pounds to well over almost 160, 170 foot pounds, just turning the knob at the bottom. It's crazy. So I just I got a visual of you scooching. Scooch. That was great. <laughs> But I, I, I'm, I'm eager to do some more work with that guy. I think it's interesting. It's very quiet. Um, the clack, clack, clack. I'm not a fan of the way it does its action, but I get over it. Um, and I haven't shot it full auto yet. But I will. I'll you save haven't? That. No, no. It's, it's a lot of what? pellets. And then you're done, you know. Just so. once. I will. Just once. I'll do it, I'll do it for Modern Air Gunner. I, I need to do a video for Modern Air Gunner anyway, so... I got to get that out for the end of the end of the month. So we have something for next month's newsletter. We only have one poor little sad video for for Modern Air Gunner because we've been too busy yeah. on other things. Poor little sad one little video. And it was yours. I didn't even add anything. So you get off my butt, get some work done. So yeah, you have no reason at all. Yeah, that is what it is, right? Um, okay, so so there's ahead. a there's a couple comments um okay, Eddie Moit, he's asking me if i've shot the aea element 50 i have not but you have right rick i did mm -hmm. yeah um i have not had experience with that so i like the gun i don't have it anymore which is a shame because i had a bunch of stuff set up to do with it but um the arrangement that was uh outlined did not uh work out so the gun went back to the 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 sponsor anyway but i did like it a lot well then there's um 
Matt says, Matt Friedman says, AA, hey, that's why people spend tons on top rails and whatever else on their M3s. And then backroads air gunning, extended bottom rail, and a good light bipod on it. Ari, let the FX float. Yep. I think floating the floating barrels is actually to its advantage. I think you got to work out a different way so that you don't kadonk it on the barrel on <laughs> your shooting stand. Yeah. That's an arrogant That's the thing bonus. with hunting. Oh, you, you when you're hunting, I mean, just stuff happens. <laughs> just <laughs> it's nothing is planned. Nothing is planned. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of hope, right? Yep. 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 Well, it's funny because the night before, I told my husband, I was like, I'm going to go out there and I'll probably get like three or four of them. And he's like, yeah, right. You are not. <laughs> and I called him the next morning after he dropped me off. I called him. I got three, maybe five. And he was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty cool to report back. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I was just, I just threw up FT Air Guns website. Um, I'll throw up Pyramid Airs here in a minute, but... There, there's the FX right there. I, I'm a, I'm a fan of this gun yeah. and this caliber. I mean, it's a beautiful platform in general. But like I said, I have so many small bore guns that shoot really, really well that the FX stuff impresses me less in small bore stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But the 35, from the day I shot it when they were out here for Aragon Expo, which is, I got to talk about that. Um, from the day they were out here for Aragon Expo, I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I want that gun. Let me uh, actually pull that up. Let's talk about that for a moment. Okay. Um, I'll say, um, Eddie Moyt, all of my big bore, like 980 feet per second best. So, what big bores do you have, Eddie? What was his comment again, Angie? All of his big bores, like 980 feet per second best. Okay. No, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, again, I guess. Okay. So my I'm 45 that's for slugs could be, I mean, it could be, I, I I'm going to do, just do some more work with them because, um, and I haven't been able to spend as much time on the range as I'd like. You guys know why I don't give that again, but I hope to do more. Um, just get out. The weather right now has been like been in a boiler. So if I'm not out there by six 30 or seven, I ain't going back out. Ain't gonna happen. Mm. Um, so really quickly, uh, Ergen's uh, Ergen Expo 2023 dates are up. You guys can check out the website. Um, we're working on finalizing. Uh, well, we're, we're working. We're starting to work on it. I've got to send out an email to all the potential sponsors. We'll see what happens. Um, I know Angie's hoping to be out here. I hope JSB and Joe will be back out here again because we always have fun with Joe. Um, and I, I'm hoping that we're going to have a really good time with it. Um, what we'll be doing this time around is going to be like last year. We'll have uh, some canned videos because, boy, did that ever help out uh, working in between weather issues and stuff, Angie. Remember, I mean, it was wonderful having that canned content, but we could give ourselves a bit of a break. And then we'll have yeah. live, live range footage. So we're going to try and do the same sort of layout. Where we'll have some live stuff, some range stuff. Um, the other thing we're doing is I'm going to clear out a section, and if you're a vendor or you want to come out and put up a tent booth thing, come on out. I'm not going to charge for it. Come on out, because if you're one, if you're here, you really want to be here. Because um, we out the sticks, <laughs> we are out in the sticks. If you come out, I'll tell you this: we'll definitely spend some time with you, and we'll we'll work with you and. and get some footage and have some fun and, and you do some promotion through the event of you just coming out. Um, I'm hopeful that we'll have our normal slew of sponsors. Last year we had a bunch more than the first year and hopefully we'll continue to grow. I really think it's a wonderful event for smaller mom and pop niche market folk like Cap Arms is a great example. Uh, last year we showed off the Cap Dragon um, and there was a lot, of, a lot of interest, but they had inventory shortages. Now they have inventory. So if we could do something again where you could see it and then go buy it, I think that's going to be awesome. Um, but that's a small sort of boutique shop that's, you know, they don't have the, they don't have a Pyramid Air budget or an Air Guns of Arizona budget or a Utah Air Gun budget. They don't have that budget. Um, and our, we're not that expensive to come out of here and do something. So, you know, I'm hopeful that the smaller um, mom and pop type stuff or, you know, niche, niche companies 
will come make make use of the expo because I think that's really the, the great advantage because not only will we do the live content there, but we publish it. It lives forever. And I get phone calls regularly, people trying to find, trying to call Air Guns of Arizona or other places because they they find the content here at Air, Gun, at Air Gun Expo and call me at my phone number up there and don't realize they're they're not calling Air Guns of Arizona, they're calling me. So I have to point them in the right direction. But it point is that that, that content lives on and on and on. So it's something that people are able to just continue to come use. Um, and so if you want to see what the show was like last year, you can go to, um, you can go and actually see our range day, our, our studio things, you know, we can, you can kind of click on a sponsor and it'll give you their page. Cause we create a sponsor page for each, uh, each company that has that presents and you can see all their cool stuff. So it is very, very cool. Hope you guys will um, check it out. And if you want to come out and join us for the expo, yeah, come on out. The There are directions, I think, somewhere here. Yeah, the event location here. And like I said, if you want to be here, you really, really want to be here. Where is my – well, there's the instructions, but we used to have pictures and stuff. I'll have to update that. But if you want to be here, you really, really, really want to be here because we are out in the sticks. Uh, but – we're going to run from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday and Saturday. We're going to um, I'm going to open it up for a fun shoot, a, a Gateway Air Guns fun shoot. So if you want to come and shoot some of the cool stuff that we've been playing with all week, come on out. Um, and you can you just you know if we have ten people, great. If we have fifty people, great. If we have a hundred people, great. It doesn't matter to me. Come on out, have fun, and uh, we'll shoot some air guns and shoot some video. And, you guys can just have a good time putting hands on stuff you probably would never have a chance to do. So that's the plan for the the expo. So hope you guys can make some time to come out. Any comments we got going on there, Angie? We do. We have um, Fowler Airguns has the he, his question is has the M3 and 357 been your top pick 357 airguns so far? Anything come close for you yet? Uh, um, go ahead. I'll let you go, Angie, and then I'll go. I mean, I really haven't had a heck of a lot of experience with a whole lot of 357s. I know I've got the Benjamin Bulldog, but I mean, yeah, the FX is awesome. But I didn't think I was going to like the Bulldog when I pulled it out of the box, but it grew on me. It was pretty cool there. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'd say yes. Um, for me, uh, it has a major flaw, like major flaw. It, it 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 the magazine is just the biggest problem for me with that gun. Not that I don't want a, a magazine fed thirty five cal, but it's so do limiting. You, That's for me. Do you That's have it. any FX slugs? Not thirty fives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to get some. Make some for it. I was supposed to, uh, FT. I got to get hold of FT because they were supposed to send me some ammo for it, some slugs, uh, and I have not. I don't. I don't shoot slugs. I shoot pellets, right? As a pellet gun, by far superior. Absolutely. As a gun that I would hunt larger things with in 35, no. I would go probably for like, uh, personally, my my personal preference, I would go like an MNX Ibex 35. It does 300 foot pounds in a 35 cal. See, that, that it'll push... Push slugs at over a thousand foot per second. It shoots the shoots the ninety five grain hollow points at close to a thousand thousand feet per second, and it's hundred yard accurate. I mean, just crushing. Um, that's more my style for a thirty five. But if we're looking at just a pellet gun, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's better than the Ottoman that I've shot. Um, it's better than the Evanex mag guns that I've shot, like the well any of their their like the Maximels or stuff. Uh, they're just they're they don't really put out the power that the FX can do. Uh, shot count, dual regs, adjustable, yes, awesome. If I'm just shooting pellets, but if I really that's wanna, what I was gonna say next. Yeah. Shot yeah. count, shot count. Shot, what? Yeah, yeah. But if I'm going to shoot like if I, let's say I was gonna hunt deer, I would I would want something different personally. Yeah. Yeah, I want a. Uh, I want to shoot something. I think the bulldog would frankly be a better choice if I was hunting deer. 
nice longer mag. Really, you got lots more options that way. I'm really not giving a. Um, I don't know enough about the FX to really say either way. Honestly, I need to know more about it. I need to know its limits and and that kind of thing. So, but yeah. I really do like it a lot so far, especially oh, since I, I had success yeah. hunting with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like the gun a lot in 35. I I don't know. For me, if I had it in 22, it'd be eh. exactly. It wouldn't say it would, would be awesome. I'm just saying, I, I, Air Arms in 22 it's, uh, that I'm like in love with, right? Um, <laughs> I won't tell your wife. Yeah, <laughs> she she already knows. Um, I mean, for small bore, I, they don't impress me nearly as much. Um, I think the Wildcat in, in the 22 is phenomenal. Um, much more affordable. And it, I mean, you shot the Wildcat, Angie. It's a mm -hmm. really beautiful gun. But like that day state, the day state you had that I have getting that now, the, this, uh, the Revere. Yep. I mean, it's $1,000, $1,200 cheaper and, you know, in a small bore. And it just does what I want it to do. So, but as far as the 35 cal pellet gun, I think it's, bees knees for me but for all there's there's more all in the home. chat yep and i like what? this name bush wookie bush wookie 13 <laughs> and... <laughs> that's good <laughs> you sure you're not the wookie okay <laughs> any news on a new 30 cal break barrel he has a 22 25 flash pup pcp and the 130s 30 I use the 30 cal brake barrel more often than the others. It's just that good. Yeah, the 135. I have a couple 135s new in the box. Actually, I need to pull one out and shoot it. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. That's that's a niche gun. I don't think anybody else has the um, moxie to put that out. I know Gamma does it. I can barely get them to think about a 25, much less a 30. Um, but for hot sun, I mean, look, the, the 30 cal hot sun gun, I mean, I was sitting with the owner of hot sun USA saying, you know, you should put a 30 cal barrel on the, on the 125 or 135. You'd have the only big bore break barrel in the U S in the market period. You already have the 30 cal because I helped develop and worked with them to make the, the carnivore guns. In fact, I named the hot sun carnivore, which was the BT 65 and 30 and 30 and 35. So those guns, I was the first one to shoot the dog on things here in the U S he flew out. We went to the, to the desert and shot him, and we're sitting around the table and said, you really should do a 30 cal break barrel. And they built the dog on thing. I had one of the first ones that came through and shot it. I said, it doesn't matter if it doesn't get 600 feet per second. If it's doing 550 and it's, it's just lobbing like artillery, like big artillery shells into the target. Who cares? It's still doing more power than all the other stuff. And it's just so unique. It's awesome. But I mean, they had everything already, and they already had the 135, which was ridiculously powerful, um, and they already had the 30 cal barrel. So all they had to do is go, and now you got it. So there's nobody else set up to do that. I don't know so, of a single maker that could even come close to doing that. Would you have to be built like Tony to be able to cock it, though? Well, I can do it. I ain't built like Tony, so <laughs> it might be might be better if you're built like Tony. If you guys don't know who Tony is, go watch some of the Gamo videos of us hunting iguana. Tony is like, you know, <laughs> he's like <laughs> that's huge. He's huge. You don't mind walking through a dark alley if Tony's with you. He's all right. You you're gonna be all right. <laughs> he's a big old dog. He's hi Tony. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Yes, I want to pop you up. Click next. <laughs> it's easy, <laughs> easy. Tony's so big, he looks at the, he looks at the brake barrel. It scares it into submission. Cox itself. I'm just saying. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare to shoot. Yes, ma'am. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so another comment. Um, Rick, isn't Wyrock RWS superior in quality to Gamma? Thanks. Uh, Wyrock, I would say, is a step up. Yeah, RWS. Um, you know, RWS. I don't know all the history in it, but let me just say this: um, 
Diana used to make RWS. I don't know who's making RWS now. Walter may, may, may be making RWS now. RWS is, uh, it's not a manufacturer. It's a brand, okay? So, like, and here's what happened with Diana. There's some Diana guns that are still like, yeah. Um, like, for example, the RWS, uh, not RWS, excuse me, Diana 54 Air King. I want one. I will own one at some point in time. It's six, seven, eight hundred bucks, whatever it is. Yes, that's going to be better than a Gamma. Absolutely. Now, is the, you know, the, the 34 intact gas ram gun better than a gamo is it still made in germany or is it made in china i don't know diana was bought out so they're not all made in germany anymore hmm. i don't know it's like beeman beeman was a was not a manufacturer they were an importer that put their name on things like the beeman r9 was an HW95, which are Wyrock or uh, Wyrock 95. I think my number's right. I have an R9. It's exceptional, gorgeous, amazing gun. But then Beeman was bought out. And they became part of, eventually became part of Shanghai Air Gun Group, which makes all kinds of Beeman products. But they ain't made in Germany. <laughs> and they ain't the same. So when you have that kind of transition of ownership, uh, the Chinese, let me say this, it's not fair to say that. It doesn't always happen. It can happen that a purchaser, regardless of who they are, buys a company for the prestige of the name, absorbs their intellectual property, and then goes to the cheapest way to have that built to leverage the name. And it it takes a while for consumers then to figure out that it's not the same quality. It's happened over and over and over and over and over and over. Now, that's just the way it has, tends to go. Um, you know, Gamo, uh, they seem to continue to improve. Are they the best? No, they, they have their faults like everything else. Um, but if you look at the volume of guns that they are making that are selling like off, I mean, like Walmart can't keep them in stock kind of a thing. Especially in Florida. Especially Florida. If there's iguanas, <laughs> yeah, right? Um, the the sheer volume is insane. And they just keep selling. And they're really pretty darn good for the money. You know, would I prefer different mechanics and construction yes i would but i'm an enthusiast right i'm picky i've shot really good brake barrels i had a conversation recently with somebody about it is a guy who in fact he was calling me about a small bore uh, uh, fx impact mark three and you know he's at 30 yards he wants to get one hole if he's not getting one hole he doesn't want the gun okay that's fine that's his that's his Perspective, I respect it, and frankly, if I spent $2,600 on a gun, I'd want it to shoot one hole all the time at 30 yards too, right? I would I, I would not find flyers acceptable, and he's weighing and sorting his pellets. He's doing everything right, and he's still getting flyers, right? So we were talking about brake barrels, and he's, I just, I will never own a brake barrel. I just can't. I just can't get over that that pivot point. The barrel will never lock up. The same. Absolutely. Yes, it will. Absolutely, it will. Just buy the right gun. <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, the very first brake barrel I bought was a, uh, was a Remington Genesis. I spent $200 on it. And I got home and I was like, gosh, this is really cool. And the next thing I know, I can't hit the broadside. I do better throwing the gun at the target. Like, what is going on? And I grabbed the barrel and it went, ee -er, ee -er, ee -er. well, that would be the, that would be why. <laughs> you know, the scope is on the receiver. The barrel is not attached to that. It, went, ee -er, ee -er. it goes up, down, left, right. It goes all over the place. Yeah, you're not going to, it's not no good. And I immediately, like I under, understand his thing, every brake barrel has got to be like that then. No, they're not. That one was like that because it was a piece of garbage made in China. 
for very, very little money and then sold under the Remington brand to a guy who thought Remington was quality and Remington is quality, at least maybe in their guns and the firearms, but not their licensed air guns were not quality. So the next gun I got happened to be a Gamo Hunter 440, completely different scenario. Never had a problem with that barrel joint. It locked up tight every time. Beautiful gun. I gave it to my niece, I think, has it. And Gamma went through a time when they transitioned from metal, like a metal receiver to metal breech, metal components for the lockup. They went to synthetics. And there, there for a while, it was horrible. It's terrible. Every Gamma gun I got, this was back seven, eight years ago. It would work great for, I don't know, 500, 1,000 rounds. And then the barrel joint would, would begin to wear. I'd send it to them. They'd fix it, send it back, and I never had a problem with that gun again. So obviously something was going on. They knew what it was. They fixed it. I just made use of the warranty, let them fix their gun. And it was fine from that point on. Um, but now I don't, I don't, I have not had a Gamo brake barrel have a barrel lockup problem probably three years, maybe four years. They've all been good. Now you go to like, I'm talking a lot about stuff that maybe people don't care about, but I'm, okay, we got onto the subject, sorry. Um, I really like this stuff, right? So I have a Walther LGV, which I had an LGU, and oh my gosh, am I ever sorry I sold that gun. It was, it was uh, LGU was an under lever version of a Walther. It only shot 600 feet per second in 22, but it was just insane how accurate that gun was. Anyway, I have an LGV in 177. It's an $800 brake barrel. And I don't even have the fancy one. <laughs> they had a fancier wow. one that might have been more money. Um, but it is over-engineered like so incredibly over-engineered and when you break the barrel there's a lever you have to pull the lever and it goes and then you put it back up it goes clank it sounds like a sounds like a bank vault <laughs> clank i'm like wow i mean it is so precisely engineered that it is just it, it's incredible um little to no recoil no noise it has like the 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 engineering of how to deal with torque and recoil and, and all that stuff of it in a Springer, oh, it's just so far superior to any other brake barrel I've ever shot in my life. It's just, it was inc it's incredible. I have that gun. It's a beautiful gun. Love it. Um, will, will not sell that one. I don't ever hope to anyway. I hope to not ever sell it. But um, it all depends on... Back to the original question, Diana RWS better than Gamo. Depends on who's making them. Really. I think back in the day, I would have told anyone, if you're going to buy an air gun, your first air gun should be an RWS 34 and 22 cal. German made, it was, it was boring looking. This wooden is, I say boring now, it's actually looked really pretty, but it, it was boring for the time. Um, just a standard stock and the T06 trigger, which was probably still one of, I have I have a T06, so I, hopefully I have something with T06 you can try when you come out, but it is, it'll scare you how nice that trigger is, Angie. Um, spring gun, traditional, beautiful, just super reliable. Um, and then you actually have something to start with that you know, okay, brake barrels can be really awesome. Um, that is a, uh, I don't, I don't know that I could say that today. I don't know who makes them. I don't know who, I don't even, I think the Diana makes a 34, but is it the same as when they were making them for RWS? I don't know. I don't know. It's a bummer when you see those sort of transitions happen. Any other questions? There are. Um, let me see. I agree with Fowler Air Guns. Big Boar is where it's at. <laughs> um, let's see. Backroads Air Gunning. LOL. April 1st, Tom Gaylord announced a 35 brake barrel easy to cock. Then later that year, Hotson showed the 30 Hotson at SHOT Show Nostradamus. I'm not familiar with that. 
I mean, the 135 brake barrel is the one that Hotson and I worked with um, back in the day. I shot one of the very first ones. Gosh, I might still be sitting in my Conix. And I might have given it to Cecil, actually, when he when he moved. Because I had that original the original spring gun. It wasn't a gas ram. And I really liked the spring version of it. Anyway. You should have one of your employee or employees go through and do like an inventory list of all the guns that you've had. <laughs> The only the only way I could be, I could might get I might get Naomi to go out and do that I guess anyway. Jacob wants to know if the Gamo Magnum twenty five caliber was discontinued. He can't find it anywhere. Let's see. The Magnum GR they probably ran out of inventory. Um, that's a special run. Oh, uh, have you seen the new Swarm Pro Magnum? The new Swarm Magnum Pro, Angie. They got a new yes, stock sir. on it. Yep. Is Lawrence sending you one? Do you got some coming yes. to you? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And one seven seven and twenty two. I'll look forward to you doing those reviews, Angie. <laughs> and I was I was sure to tell Lawrence thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a set coming too. So, um, let's see. Uh, twenty two. Let's see, we have twenty five. See, caulking them is not I'll... that bad if you're doing it. A few times but in a review <laughs> hundreds of uh, times yes yes and by the end of the review i'm like i don't want to shoot you for a long time <laughs> Ooh. i just got a text um i have to call that uh, in a show chat later your doctor hasn't called that's odd that's because all my all my appointments have changed they'd switch chemo from the first of the week to the end of the week and i don't have any blood work to like the end of the month so yeah, yeah they won't call till two weeks from now um there's the good i yeah i'm not seeing any 25s they probably sold out what a bummer yeah it's a bummer this is a great gun right here. If you guys, if anyone's looking to like get an old school, a quality brake barrel that's like steel, like the breech is steel, the, all the lockup components are steel and not plastic composite amalgamation. This gun here is freaking cool. Really, really I just nice. got one of those. Did you really? I did really. Wow. Oh, yeah. did you did you do the unboxing of your mystery gamo stuff? I did. But now it's not a mystery, and I haven't posted the video yet. So. That's fine. Just fine. Shh. Nobody watches this. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So anyway, I guess that's going to be it. We ran over. Um, hopefully that was had some use. I think the point of the whole video was, are pellets viable for hunting? Yeah. Do you need to do some work on your gun to make them viable for hunting? Probably. Is shot count like super important? Yeah, obvious. I mean, shot placement important. Yeah, obviously. Um, so, like, there you go. Um, am I looking forward to killing a coyote with my Impact Mark III 35 cal? Hell yeah. Who do you <laughs> think's going to get one first? Well, I don't know. Last time I set you up on a couple coyotes and you couldn't pull the trigger in time. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't hold still, Angie. you got to have to take the shot. No. <laughs> Don't. They are twitchy little guys. We need Broad to tie jackrabbit down. <laughs> Broad daylight. It's right there. It's right there. He's gone. <laughs> it wasn't even night. It was like like four thirty in the afternoon. He's right there. Shoot it. He's gone. Rick, I'm under. <laughs> I've already gone over under the two front tires of the bus. Now I'm under the back ones. Thank yeah. you so very much for that. <laughs> well, you know the truth is that you're a far better hunter than I ever ever was or may ever ever will be. So. I can I can pick on you all I want, but the truth is that you put food on the table for your family, and well, I do too. I just have to go work to like a job and go buy it at the grocery store. That's how I do it. I'll throw you under the bus. I'll throw you okay, under the bus. great. Ready? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> so, the, one of the funniest. And that's it for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No, it was when oh. we were sitting in the blind. It was like 25 degrees outside. Oh. It was so cold. And I think we saw a coyote come up and Rick's breathing. 
<laughs> was so heavy. <laughs> he was so excited. That's why. And I thought it was cool that he was excited. But I found it hilarious. And it was in the video recording that we listened to <laughs> later. <laughs> I was like, Rick, I didn't know you got that excited. <laughs> yeah, I want you to get a coyote. I was out there freezing parts of myself off. <laughs> yeah, well, we thought it was cold in the blind. It was a <sighs> heck of a lot colder outside. Yeah, we had a heater in the blind. <laughs> we were cheating. So, <laughs> all right, guys. It was only heating one side of our leg. <laughs> yes, that was that was that was tough. <laughs> anyway, all right, that's going to be it, guys. Thank you for hanging out. Sorry we had all the technical issues, and we'll get it we'll get it sorted out next week. I, I have an idea of what's going on, and we'll 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 address it, and we'll have back up to full full power next week. So, thank you guys for coming out and hanging out with us. And that's really going to be it, guys. Please don't forget, if you haven't joined the GTA, please go join the GTA, gatewayairguns.org. If you want a chance to win Angie's custom Air Venturi Avenger, please go to the website. It's gatewayairguns.com slash contest. Links in the description. Links on the in the chat. You guys can go, like, you guys could – somebody's going to win this thing. And we're going to ship it out. And somebody's going to have a really cool air gun. Um, that's, and I'm trying to get Angie to like autograph it or something, you know, I think that would be cool. Um, anyway. and terrible handwriting. Doesn't matter. Terrible. It's an autograph, oh, Angie, yeah. who cares? I just scribble. <laughs> hey, <we're done. laughs> it's fine. Um, and I want to say thank you to all of our supporters here. Um, if you guys want to know who they are, you guys want to check out the folks that help us do what we do, uh, gateway to is our like site with all our video content. You want to watch it there and check it out. And also airgunweb.com. Both of them will have all of our sponsors and all the folks that help us um, actually be here and do this stuff. So just thank you to all, that, all of them. And thank you to you guys for watching and, you know, making this work doing. It's going to be it. Good night. You guys have a great, great thank rest you of your week. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Night.